Hey guys, Charlie here. So this is my second winter living in this house, which has a hydronic floor heating system. In this video, I'm going to be sharing what I like about it, what I don't like, and just some general discussion around hydronic floor heating. So let's get started. So I'm gonna tell you what an in-slab hydronic floor heating system is, which is the system that I have at this house. With an in-slab hydronic floor heating system, heating pipes are laid onto the reinforcement mesh of the structural slab of the house. These pipes connect into a manifold and the pipes are poured into the structural slab. That manifold is then connected into a gas boiler that it sits outside of the house and the gas boiler runs hot water at around 50 degrees Celsius through the system and heats the floor that way. As the pipes heat up, the concrete heats up. And as the concrete heats up, that heat rises up into the room and heats the house. The reason why this system is especially effective is because concrete has a very high thermal mass, which means it's very dense, it can hold a lot of heat, and it slowly releases that heat, which makes for very comfortable heating. Now, there is another very popular hydronic floor heating system called an in-screed system and I'm gonna be discussing what the differences are between an in-screed and an in-slab system later on in this video. But first, let's talk about what I love about the in-slab hydronic floor heating system at this house. Comfort, that's the first reason. Wow, was that cringy. Don't click away though, I know you wanna click away, it was really cringy, I shouldn't have said it like that. Just keep watching, be good. One of the best feelings that I associate with this floor heating system is coming down the stairs in the morning and putting your feet on this really nice warm concrete floor, which you would otherwise associate with as being a really harsh, cold surface. Another reason why this floor is so comfortable is because of the concrete floor's high thermal mass, that heat energy is being released slowly up into the room. And that means that if you turn off the system, it doesn't cool down the room right away. And because that heat source is coming from the floor and it's rising up, you don't have that issue where if you're blowing hot air from a ceiling that the air above, say, chest height is quite warm, but then below chest height is a lot cooler. Instead, as the hot air rises from the floor up to the ceiling, you have a very even spread of temperature from the floor all the way to the ceiling. And it just makes the space so much more comfortable. The second reason why this hydronic floor heating system is so good is because of its convenience. The way that we use this system is very much a set and forget method. We set the thermostat to 21 degrees or 22 degrees Celsius and we just leave it on for about six to eight months of the year. In Melbourne where we use the heater for so much of the year, it's just such a big convenience to be able to turn the heater on at the start of the heating season and just leave it on throughout the whole season without having to worry about it. Well, doesn't that beg the question then that this system must cost a fortune to run because you're leaving it on for six or eight months in a year. And that leads to the third reason why I love this system, which is that it's really, really efficient. Even though you're leaving it on for six, eight months of the year, that doesn't mean that it's running 24 hours a day. The beauty of in-slab hydronic heating is that that thermal mass of the concrete is able to hold the heat so well that the boiler only needs to turn on as a booster once the slab gets up to temperature. Now what that means is this system is only turning on for a few hours a day on most days and on the coldest Melbourne days, it's on for eight or 10 hours. When you compare that to a ducted gas heater, that heater needs to be running all the time and blowing hot air into the room to maintain that room temperature. And as soon as you turn it off, that heat just dissipates, especially if you have a leaky house. Okay, okay, it's not all perfect. And my number one issue with this in slab hydronic floor heating system is its uneven heat distribution. Now, what I mean by this is because the whole floor is being heated, you would expect that it's an even temperature across the whole house. Unfortunately, at some parts of the floor, it is drastically different in temperature to other parts of the floor, whether it's in different rooms or even from just one spot to the next. 
And there's a few reasons as to why that happens. In some areas of the house where the slab might be thicker or there are deeper ground beams, uh, internal beams, edge beams, you're gonna be losing more heat into the ground. And what does that mean? Less of that heat is coming up. Therefore, those parts of the floor or those parts of the house aren't getting as much heat as the areas where the slab is thinner uh, or the beams uh, aren't as big. In this bedroom, for example, at this corner of the room, there is a massive 1.5 meter deep external beam. And you can see that the floor here is a lot lower in temperature compared to say the living area. And the room temperature is also significantly lower. The other scenario under which we have this problem is in smaller rooms. Because this hydronic heating pipe can't be laid too close to walls or joinery or say underneath showers, in some smaller rooms such as bathrooms, you have a very low ratio of heating pipe compared to the volume of the room. So let's say for example, we have three meter ceilings here. In the living room, one square meter of floor space is heating three cubic meters of room volume. In a bathroom where you're not getting full coverage of the heating pipe across the whole floor, one square meter of hydronic heating pipes might be heating five or six cubic meters of volume. That means that not only is the floor not going to get as warm as the other areas, that room is also going to be a lot cooler than the areas of the house with more heat coming out of the floor. And finally, changes in floor finishes can also impact the distribution of heat across the floor and across different rooms. The areas of the house with polished concrete suffer least from heat loss due to the floor finish because those pipes are really close to the surface of the floor. Also, concrete is a really excellent conductor of heat. So those two things paired together make for the polished concrete areas to be really a lot more efficient, especially when you compare them to other areas such as carpeted rooms where the carpet underlay is uh, insulating uh, in its properties. The carpet itself is insulating in its properties, which is stopping the heat from rising up through the carpet. And also the pipes are of much further distance from the surface of the floor. And the third thing I don't like about this system is its efficiency. Yes, yes, I know. I just said that efficiency is one of the reasons that I love this system. And yes, from a user experience standpoint, from uh, you know how expensive your gas bill is standpoint, I still think that it is really efficient. But I can't stand the fact that from a building science perspective, it is so inefficient. All that heat that's being lost into the ground, all that heat that's being lost into the structural elements of the slab, uh, the way that uh, you know the slab isn't insulated on the side, so that that heat is being lost to the outside world as well. That means that there is so much room for improvement in this system. If only we could stop the heat being lost into the ground. If only. Rejoice! There are ways that we can improve the efficiency of in-slab hydronic systems. Something I've seen frequently is the inclusion of insulation underneath those heating pipes to stop a lot of that heat being lost into the ground. Not only is this a good way to increase the efficiency of an in-slab system, it may now even be a requirement to insulate your in-slab heating systems to get that six star energy rating that's required by Australian law. But don't quote me on that, that's just something I've heard. You'll need to consult your energy rating consultant to be 100% sure. However, this still doesn't stop all that heat that's being lost into the structural beams, into the edge beams and out the side of the slab. Is there really no hope for hydronic floor heating systems? Rejoice once again. Remember that in screed hydronic floor heating system I mentioned at the start of the video? That'll solve all these problems. Well, most of them. The difference between in screed hydronic floor heating systems and in slab heating systems are with an in screed system, the heating pipes aren't in the structural slab. Instead, the structural slab is poured, the wall plates are built, and then a layer of insulation is laid on that structural slab. On top of those insulating boards, the hydronic heating pipes are laid and connected onto the manifold. And then another concrete pour is done to create another floor on top of that structural slab. That is the screed, and the hydronic pipes are in the screed, which is why it's called an in-screed hydronic floor heating system. This means that we can pretty much totally insulate our floor heating from the structural elements of the slab. 
by separating the floor that's being heated with the slab, what this does is it eliminates heat loss into the structural slab and into the ground. And more importantly, in my opinion, it creates even heat distribution throughout the house. Of course, it still doesn't solve the problem where in small rooms, there is less heating capacity. But after thinking about it, I think in those smaller rooms, perhaps you could increase the density of pipes or perhaps go with wall hung vanity units such that you can lay pipes under the vanities as well thus increasing the heating capacity of those rooms and alleviating this heat distribution issue. Now, in my opinion, the major downside to in-screed systems is that they're almost twice as expensive, if not more than that, than an in-slab system. But you could save a little bit of money throughout the life cycle because the system is more efficient and it also gives you a little bit more flexibility in the design of your floor. If you're going to be using a polished concrete floor finish, which is very commonly paired with floor heating, it makes more sense to be using decorative concrete mixes when compared to using decorative concrete mixes for in slab applications. The reason for that is with an in screen concrete pour, the volume of concrete that you use is generally very low. That means that those really special decorative concrete mixes that can be really expensive become a lot more affordable because you're using such a low volume of concrete. So let's say if you were pouring a structural slab and your slab needed 100 cubic meters of concrete, whereas an in screen pour, you may be using 20 cubic meters of concrete. At $400 a cubic meter, that really special concrete mix that you wanted would cost you $40,000 just in concrete alone. Whereas for an in screen pour, you'd only be paying $8,000. <sighs> yes, and I know what some of you guys are thinking. You don't have to pour the whole structural slab in decorative concrete, right? Well, yes, so let's say you pour your structural beams uh, in a normal concrete, and then you pour the slab in a decorative mix. But most of the concreters and industry guys that I've spoken with really don't think that that's a very viable option because as you're sludging concrete around and vibrating and, and, and screeding, it's very easy to mix that normal concrete with that decorative concrete and it'll just ruin the whole floor. The other benefit of InScreed is it gives you the flexibility to have polished concrete in wet areas. In bathrooms, for example, it's really important for you to membrane and waterproof that floor really well. Of course, if you are laying a tiled floor, no problem. Put that membrane all over that concrete floor, no problem. However, if you want a polished concrete floor, how are you gonna waterproof it? That's why with InScreed, what you can do is you can waterproof that structural slab and bring the membrane up the side and then pour your in screed slab on top of that. So that means that with an in screed hydronic floor heating system, you can have that beautiful blue concrete floor that you've always wanted with perfectly even heat distribution throughout the whole house and have that blue floor in your bathroom.